But, you know, we have these interesting lives that we live. And I find that there's a lesson in everything. There, there, there is something that we can extract from any and all things that we're going through in this life. If you choose to look at it the right way, if you put the right lens on and you have the right perspective, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you see people going through, if you take a step back and instead of asking why me and just ask what is the lesson that I'm supposed to learn in this, you'll be surprised that God is setting you up for the ultimate victory. But sometimes you just gotta go through the process. Sometimes you got to just take a step back and understand that within the process, that's where the preparation comes from. Whatever your destiny is, I don't know what y'all are doing. I know with some of you guys who we stay in contact with one another, I know what y'all are doing. But for any of the movers who's in this tonight, just rock me with me for a second. Just rock with me for one second. And week over week, y'all know, I go into the penitentiaries and I speak to a lot of the inmates and some of these inmates have done unthinkable things. Like they have done things that will really make your skin crawl. And you almost can't believe that in talking to them, because some of them are really nice people. They're human beings. They're good men, good men. They just got caught up and did some bad things. And it's a few of them that week over week, I just enjoy going and talking to them. Every time I go into certain institutions, I'm like looking forward like, yo, where my man such and such at? Where my man such and such at? So last week I was in the institution and I'm talking to one of the inmates that I'm, you know, I, I like him. He's a good dude. At heart, he's a great dude. And Right now, he's waiting. He hasn't gone to trial yet. He don't know how long he's going to be in. And he got a tip murder charge and about three other charges that came with that. So we've been working on, you know, he, he hit me a couple of weeks ago and he's just like, yo, Sean, look, I want to write a letter to the judge. And he let me read it. And I told him, I was like, yo, look at this letter. Like, like really look at it. What do you see? And he read it back to himself. And he was like, I don't know. Like, what do you see? And I said, from the outside looking in, all I see is a bunch of eyes. Like, your honor, if you let me out, I can take care of my kid. I can get a job. I am going to walk the straight now. And I told him, like, look, what you're not acknowledging is all the people that you hurt. You're not acknowledging your victim. You're not acknowledging all the people who love you and love your victim. And you put them through so much hurt, so much pain. And I said, if I was looking at this letter and I'm the judge, I would look at you like you still haven't changed. Like your perspective, your lens, you're still looking through it the same way. It's just you're uncomfortable right now. And you want to get out. It's hot. It's chicks outside. You can look out the window. The sun is shining and you trapped in here. So why don't you go and you give it another shot? And when I went back to the prison last week or so, me and him are sitting talking and he's playing cards at the time. And he's like, like it was one of them weeks you go in there some weeks, they want to talk. You go in there some weeks and they don't. They're just in their own world. But my thing is, I, I don't care what you did. I see you as a human being. And... I'm talking to him while he's playing cards. He don't want to be bothered. I'm like, yo, well, where's the letter? Let me read the letter. And he looked back at me and he's like, I didn't write it. And I'm like, huh? What you mean you didn't write it? You didn't, like, when are you, you about to go to court in June? Like, you didn't write the letter. He was like, no, I didn't write it. So I said, did you do any of the other stuff that we talked about doing? He said, no, I didn't do it. So I stood there. And I'm because I'm like, yo, how am I going to approach this right now? So he's playing cards, barely looking at me. 
So I put my hand on the table, stop the card game, like, yo, like, we got to talk. Like, I don't know about none of this right here, but you and me, we got to talk. I said, why wouldn't you do these things? And why are you spending hour after hour after hour playing cards, playing dominoes, playing chess? And he turned to me and he said, yo, Sean, have you ever been locked up? And I said, hell no. And he was like, okay then. So now it's like some beef between us. And this is a dude I care about. So I look back at him after taking a pause, because I don't know where this is about to go. And I say, yo, me not being locked up, are you challenging my credibility? Are you challenging the fact that I can even speak to you because I was never dumb enough to be in this situation? Said, are you kidding me? I'm coming in here. I understand where you come from because I come from the same place. We both just made different choices, but that's not the fact. And he said, that is the fact. And the reason why I play cards all day, the reason why I play dominoes, the reason why I play chess is because I got to do anything, anything that can make my time be just a little bit easier. <laughs> and I just, I did exactly, I just, what? I just, and I had to compose myself. And I said, look, don't you get it? Easy is what got you in here. Easy is the reason that you don't know your future. You don't know when you're going to go home. You don't know when you're going to see your newborn. Easy did that. And I'm saying to some of y'all, we spend half of our lives doing whatever we can do to not be uncomfortable. To go where it's easy. To stay where we're familiar. And if you are going to go to the next level, whatever your next level is, you got to go someplace that it is uncomfortable. And as I'm talking to him, I said, you got to do something that ain't easy. You got to get your education. You know the streets. You know all that. You can tell me anything and everything about moving in the streets. But you got to hit them books. You got to change your mindset. You got to do something that ain't natural to you. It do not come easy. And as he's sitting there and he's looking at me, he never said a word. So I said, yo, let me tell you a little story. I said, just rock with me for a second. I said, it was this man who was born in Omaha, Nebraska. Raised in Detroit, Michigan. And from Detroit, Michigan, he went to school, dropped out of high school, came to New York. And when he was in New York, this same man got into drugs, was pimping chicks, was out there robbing people. He was doing any and everything on the streets. And when some of them Harlem drug dealers caught up with him, they ran him out of Harlem and sent him to Boston. And when he was in Boston, he got a crew of about four people. And they started going into the wealthy neighborhoods. And they was robbing white folks blind, going in their cribs while they slept, stealing anything and everything, burglarizing, robbery. And he gets caught. And when he got caught, he got sentenced to 10 years in jail. And I told him when this man went in jail, he was a high school dropout. He was uneducated. Yes, he was the leader of a crew on the outside, but this man's mind was twisted. But when he got in there, he met somebody that changed his life. He met somebody that made him take a hard look at himself and start to transform what he thought he was, who he thought he was. And he started to read like a madman. He became self-educated in prison. He gave his life to Allah. And after eight years of being locked up, 
A man who walked in that prison. A robber. A hood nigga. A drug dealer. All of those things. People calling him Detroit Red, a.k.a. Malcolm Little. He emerged and walked out of there. Malcolm X. I said, do you understand that you're in this place? And I don't know why God got you here. But use your time wisely. Stop running from what's easy. Embrace the pain. Embrace the suffering. You don't know whose life you might change or who in this place might change your life. But rise up to the occasion. And that's what I'm telling y'all movers. It's time to get uncomfortable. It's time to walk down that road that's dark and you don't know where it's going to end. You don't know what's on the other side. But if you just go down there, you don't know what God got waiting for you. Some of y'all right now, this very minute, y'all got y'all resumes up on Indeed. You're spending half of your day on LinkedIn. You're trying to get a new job as we speak because you have a boss that's riding your butt. You got somebody who's demanding that you cross your T's and dot your I's every time. You turn something in, they're holding you to the highest level of scrutiny. But instead of stepping up to the challenge, you tapping out and saying, I got to get a new job. I got to get out of here. This person got it in for me. Maybe they do have it in for you, but they're bringing the best out of you. You ever think about that? You ever think about the fact that they're in your life right now, this very minute, it could be setting you up. Setting you up for something you have no idea. But it is positioning you and preparing you for what God has in store for you. Stop running from uncomfortable. Stop running from the process. Because people love to talk about the end of the road. They love to romanticize and glamorize. When you make it to that destination, whatever that destination is, they love to romanticize and say things like trust the process. And what I'm saying is within the process, peel back the layers because in the process, that's where the education is. That's where the experience is. But most of all, that's where the preparation is. Do you understand that? Malcolm X. He went in there when he came out. Same man. New perspective. But now he was prepared for what his destiny had in store for him. Stop running from it. I know a girl right now. Beautiful woman. Beautiful. Gorgeous on the outside. Drop dead gorgeous. The only thing that matches her exterior is the beauty inside is that interior in her like most people she looking for mr right and she found what she thought was mr right this guy said all the right things he came packaged the perfect way well dressed well financed well spoken a lot of friends popular can move in and out of the club system and he had a heart. Y'all know people like that. We all know them. Will you give them the best of your years, the best of your time, the best of your body, the best of your love making, the best of your heart? And she gave him all them things. But what he gave her back was lies, was deceit. Every time this man opened his mouth, you couldn't believe a word he said. And broke her heart. Put her through it. As many times as she wanted to believe him. He proved her wrong. But when it was all over and they broke up. She went on. He went on. She moves on. And found that real love of her life. Found that dude who looks at her. 
and sees not just what's on the outside, but what's on the inside. A dude who's so brutally honest that it would make most people cringe. For her, she'll tell you to this day, I did not know that what I needed, not what I wanted, but what I needed was somebody who was authentic and real and just plain honest. I had to go through that experience so I can be prepared and respect what God had in store for me. Stop running from it. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's okay not to take the easy route. Nothing's wrong with that, y'all. Stop trying to jump the gun. Stop trying to go and skip the line. Go the hard way. Take that narrow road. Everybody's on Broadway. Yeah, it's easy to fit in on Broadway. But walking down that narrow road, that's hard. Y'all know I'm a fight fan. And one of the top grossing boxes right now he is box office success. Just sold out the Dallas arena. Put 70 some thousand people in that arena. Canelo Alvarez. This man's record is unblemished. Except for one opponent. Just one. But when he was coming up. And when he was doing his thing. His promoter said, yo. You the next man in the game. We need to get you in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather is 10 years older than Canelo Alvarez. But Canelo Alvarez is bigger. He's stronger. This is a guy who's a record machine. And everybody thought that the young lion was about to knock that old, sharp veteran off of his mantle. But this is why I tell you, you can't rush it because when Canelo Alvarez got in that ring he didn't have the experience he wasn't prepared for a fighter who had been doing it on the level of Floyd Mayweather for as many years as Floyd Mayweather has been doing it and for him no matter what he does he can go undefeated meaning Canelo Alvarez can go undefeated for the rest of his career He's always going to have that one loss, that one loss, because he tried to jump the gun too early. Take your time. Go through it. Get prepared. Get your experience. Get your weight up. And then jump out the window and go in the ring with a Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather schooled him, not because he was any stronger not because he was any faster, not because he had bigger hands. He was more prepared. He had more experience. And that's what I'm telling y'all. Get uncomfortable. Go down that road that it hurts sometimes. Start to look at things through a different lens. Stop looking at it like, why me? And ask God, what am I supposed to learn from this? Take your time, movers. Take your time. It's out there for you. It is yours. Claim it. But if you take your time and you understand that this life, this process, it is to educate. It is to build you up for the success that's waiting for you so you're not a one-hit wonder. You have great things coming for you. Movers, y'all know I love y'all. Y'all know when I do these things, I'm not focused on the finish line. The finish line is there. You gonna get there. But I want when you get there, you stay there. You're not a one hit wonder. You're not somebody who got it and lost it. People talking about, do you remember when he used to be or when she used to be? I don't never want that used to next to my name. And for all of my movers in this community, we in this thing together. If I'm rocking with y'all, I'm going to try to prepare y'all and set y'all up for the long-term success. So let's keep 
support one another. Let's keep lifting each other up. And I'll see each and every one of y'all next week.